Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this video, we will delve into the critical issues surrounding these vital social programs and their potential impact on millions of Americans' retirement security. Lan Sang, a renowned financial expert, offers a thought-provoking perspective on the challenges facing these systems. Lanad Zhang begins by shedding light on the foundation of Social Security, emphasizing that 91% of the program is funded by payroll taxes. As a pay-as-you-go program, maintaining a healthy workforce is crucial to its sustainability. However, Zhang highlights a concerning trend of declining workers to beneficiary ratios over the years, signifying potential financial strain. She warns that the trust funds are projected to be depleted by 2034, leaving Social Security vulnerable to budgetary deficits. Drawing on the trustees' projections, Zhang warns of a possible 20% reduction in combined Social Security benefits by 2034 unless legislative action is taken. She emphasizes that more than 15 million older Americans are already economically insecure, and with nearly 50% of seniors relying heavily on Social Security, such cuts could have dire consequences. Additionally, she discusses the implications of increased payroll taxes and the challenges of raising income taxes with a shrinking workforce. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. So these are the most current numbers in the Social Security. And what you need to be aware of is that 91% of Social Security is funded by payroll taxes. So it is a pay-as-you-go program. Is that why it's so critically important to keep people employed? And what you can also see is that, well, actually back in 1933 when they put this system in place, there were 158 workers for every beneficiary recipient. Well, by 1970, there were 4.3 workers. And by 1922, 2.8 workers, and it sort of seems to have been staying at 2.8 workers for a while. So I kind of question that number, but the trend shows a decline in workers and a rise in beneficiaries. So more beneficiaries, less money coming in. What in the world do you think that's going to mean to you? We know that we've been in deficit since 2010, and by 2013, that's when the baby boomers started to retire, and that's why we're having that increase in beneficiaries. But they anticipate that the trust funds will be depleted in 2034. So you see how there's like a light blue here between now and then. What they're referring to there is the fact that when we ran excess, so here and then also also earlier, when we run in, when we ran a surplus, the government borrowed that surplus and left IOUs, left debt in its place. So this blue area is us cashing in those bonds that the government uh, used to borrow those funds. So that means that they're going to have to borrow the money to repay Social Security. Any way you look at it, what do you think happens then? Let me show you. Based on the trustees' projections, combined Social Security benefits could be cut by 20% 20 by 2034 without legislative action, and we're gonna refer back to that in a second. But more than 15 million older Americans are economically insecure. So who are they gonna depend on? Maybe their children, maybe their children can't help them. About 50% of seniors rely on social security for the majority of their income. So what do you think happens if there is indeed a 20% price cut? What do you think the legislative action means? It means increased payroll taxes. And with fewer workers, I mean, how much can they raise those income taxes or those payroll taxes? So we've got a lot of things that are going on to the retirement security of most of the people. And we haven't gotten to your 401ks or pensions yet. That's coming. But let's look at Medicare's hospital insurance trust fund will be depleted by, they anticipate, 2031. Shifting focus to Medicare, Zhang notes that its hospital insurance trust fund is projected to be depleted by 2031. The decline in payroll taxes contribution to Medicare funding and rising healthcare costs paint a grim picture for the program's future. With a growing population of older Americans relying on Medicare, Zhang underscores the urgent need for sustainable solutions. Zhang discusses global population trends, illustrating the importance of immigration to maintain payroll tax revenues. 
However, she also points out that even with anticipated population growth, birth rates are declining in many countries, including the U.S. This demographic shift poses further challenges for the sustainability of retirement programs. Well, this Medicare used to also be primarily funded by payroll taxes, 64% in 1972, but only 36% in 2022 because there are limitations to how much they can tax you. I mean, can you go more than 100%? And, you know, we are taxed every time we turn around, whether we realize it or not. It's not just income taxes. It's taxes on almost everything that you buy. So we are being double, triple, quadruple, and more taxed. So there are limitations. So if that fund goes away by 2031, and you can see the deficits, I'm not really sure. I couldn't really quite figure out where there's a little bit of surplus in here. But what we know is that the tax receipts are on the decline and the rise in cost and there's a rise in costs. This is a recipe, seriously, for a disaster. Because more and more people depend on Medicare. This is the change in the US population that is utilizing Medicare between 1990 and 2021. And it's up to 18.4% of the US population. And this trend is escalating as us baby boomers continue to dominate the markets. And that is a very clear and steady and hard uptrend. In the meantime, when you look at the demographics, and really what I'm showing you isn't just true here in the U.S. This is really more of a global trend. But this is where we are at because this is immigration. The lighter blue is immigration. The dark blue are births minus deaths. So it looks like we are going to be reducing the number of people on the planet. And this is the overall. So you can see after an anticipated surge, because this is what they're anticipating. All of a sudden, we're going to get massive amounts of immigration. Well, if they change some laws, maybe they will. But you can see how important immigration is to maintaining these programs and payroll taxes. Uh, but you're also, they're anticipating not as much as before, but an increase in births versus deaths. Well, if you've got a rising baby boomer population, it means you're going to have a rising death population. And back in the day, like I'm the youngest of seven, but how many families of seven do you find anymore? So that becomes less and less common, more and more people. I mean, you know, Megan had one baby, Whitney had one baby. So there is a depopulation, that trend that has been going on. And we've talked about what's happening in China with that quiet uh, rebellion with people not even having another baby that they're trying to encourage. So after an anticipated surge in population growth, population growth is, is they expect it to decline over time. And at the same time, let's shift to pensions. For state and local pension plans, the writing is on the wall. The, through 2022, unfunded liabilities were $1.45 trillion. So these state and local pension plans, and some will be worse and some will be better, but they're only 77.3% funded. So what does that mean? Again, it means that they're going to have to increase taxes in order to make and, and or cut benefits or a combination of the two in order to maintain the state and local pension plans. The expert dives into state and local pension plans, revealing significant unfunded liabilities and a decline in the value of assets earmarked for retirement. With only 77.3% of these plans funded, Zhang highlights the potential need for increased taxes or benefit cuts to sustain them, causing concern for retirees relying on these pensions. Zhang elucidates the impact of financial market fluctuations on retirement assets. The decline in stock and bond markets has affected the value of pension plans, leading to decreased purchasing power for retirees. She cautions viewers on the potential vulnerabilities of these plans, which predominantly rely on traditional financial instruments. So all of those lofty promises, there, there's a problem with it and they are going to have to raise your taxes. So, so everything that I'm telling you in here on the public side, Taxes are going up because who's the one that really pays? And you really do need to get when the government says that they're going to spend money, they're spending your money. They're spending your tax dollars. Do you feel like you're represented? Represented? Because quite honestly, with the blockchain technology and how fabulous that is, my good friend Gerald Salente has a brilliant idea. We don't need any politicians. 
Why can't we just let the public vote? With blockchain, they should be able to do that. Yeah, I haven't heard that suggestion yet from anyone other than Gerald, and I do think it's quite brilliant. So let's take a look at private pension plans. You know, it used to be that the corporations were trying to attract workers, and so they set up these private pensions, and then the with a defined benefit, so you knew what you were going to make if you worked for the corporation for 30 years or however you know, a good good period of time. And, and typically it was 30 years. But now with everybody fo- changing jobs so often, well, they still have a lot of those pension plans in place. It's a problem for the corporations, quite honestly. The value of assets earmarked for retirement declined the most in OECD, so these are major countries, in 2022, driven by negative nominal investment rates of return. Now, if you read that, would you actually know exactly what that meant? negative nominal investment rates of return. Way to say it in a way that nobody basically understands what you're saying. But what they're really saying is the stock market and the bond market went down. Boom, that's easy enough. Fixed income instruments, bonds, The largest asset class for pension providers have seen large drops in valuations across the globe driven by high inflation and interest rates. Yeah, because central banks have been pushing interest rates up, which means the value, market value of those bonds go down. The longer the maturity, the greater that fluctuation, right? So bond markets went down. And of course, what did we see? We saw the explosion in the regional banks that happened, what, in March, April. But it happened to everybody. It didn't just happen to a little group. And widespread decreases in equity valuations have exacerbated negative returns in several markets. The stock market went down. But let's say it in a way that nobody understands it, then they don't question it. But look at what the options are typically inside of pensions. Equity, bonds, cash and deposits, collective, collective investment schemes. These are all assets that are based on this, right? So if this goes to zero, what do you got? You got nothing, a big fat bupkis. This is perfect for your retirement. Perfect. This is what my personal retirement is in. But pension plans, Social Security, Medicare, all of these things are dependent upon these Wall Street assets nominally going up because the value of this is clearly going down. That's what inflation is. And hey, if they meet their 2% target, it doesn't mean that you're gaining any purchasing power. It means you just lose it slowly enough that you don't notice it. 